do you think of these these things, these beasts? Dangerous things. Nice. Unsafe. You don't want to go for a ride? Things flailing around the air. <laughs> <laughs> Today is travel day. I just dropped Becky off at the airport. She's going to Florida. I'm going to Torrance, California. We're actually in California recently. This time I'm going back for a safety course at Robinson Helicopter Factory, which I'm really looking forward to. I meet my Uncle Bob in Torrance as well. He flies fixed wings. He actually hates helicopters, but he's agreed to fly with me. I'm doing one practice lesson with somebody there. He's supposed to be very good. And I'll take you along on that for sure with the GoPros. I'm a firm believer in sort of diversifying knowledge. And if you can learn a skill or a craft from multiple people, you can take little bits of what you like from each teacher and ultimately be a better pilot or a better whatever you're into. It's almost time to leave, so cue travel montage. Okay, made it into Torrance safely. I'm absolutely dead right now because it's a lot later than I'm used to since I'm traveling west. Day starts early at 7.30. Not sure what I'm gonna be able to film there, but uh, we'll explain it somehow. We'll figure it out. Okay, hazy California day, day one. Just walking over to the factory. This, all this haze will burn off. I, I have a feeling it's gonna be a great day. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I'm such a dork. As predicted, another beautiful California day. We covered a lot of accident related uh, topics today. And there's some good quotes in that. I'll talk about that a bit later. But first, I think I'm going to actually head down to the beach. The question I often get asked is, is flying a helicopter dangerous? I'll start with a quote from the course today from Kurt Robinson, who's the president of Robinson Helicopters. Flying is dangerous because it requires judgment and skill. And there's a lot of truth to that. And he also kind of went on and said, I bet everybody in this room has a type A personality. How do I know that? Well, because you're all helicopter pilots and nobody normal does that. And there's also some truth to that too, because people who fly helicopters are inherently going to be more of a risk taker than people who do not. So back to the original question, is flying a helicopter dangerous? The answer is yes, but people always want to know, well, how dangerous? And I can tell you that, you know, there's one to two fatalities per 100,000 flight hours flown, but to most people that doesn't mean anything. It's very hard to fathom such large numbers like that. And then what people try to do is they try to compare it to other things that they're more familiar with. And the common thing people want to compare it to is driving a car. Aircraft accidents are reported in number of accidents per unit time flown, whereas automobile accidents are reported in number of accidents per distance driven. There's no real way to compare them. Slate Magazine tried to do a back of the napkin calculation. They came up with a number that flying a helicopter is 85 times more dangerous than driving a car which if you go on to Vertical Reference Forum where some helicopter pilots hang out, people criticize that saying they made a lot of assumptions and I do my own calculation and I only get it to be about 10 times more dangerous than driving. If it's 10 times more dangerous than driving, that's actually less dangerous than driving a motorcycle. Nonetheless, it's completely moot because they are two completely different things. It's like me saying, I'm never gonna use a table saw over a hammer because the table saw is more dangerous. They do, they're two different tools used for completely different things. People will often try to compare fixed wing to rotary wing or planes to helicopters. There's gonna be a selection bias. You're inherently using them for riskier missions, getting into tight confined areas that you otherwise couldn't do with a fixed wing. So again, the comparison isn't 
all that easy. Furthermore, depending on the source you look at, you'll get different answers. If you look at numbers from the United States helicopter safety team, they actually say that fixed wings crash more often. Whereas if you look at other bodies like this Australian report, they'll say that fixed wings crash less often than helicopters. You have to also consider the fact that you're reporting on events that are very rare, so your numbers are very low and very prone to statistical fluctuations. For helicopter pilots, they're already a rare breed to begin with compared to fixed wing, so the numbers may jump around as you can see in some of these graphs which is likely due to the fact that you're dealing with such low quantities. It is a less controversial fact though that general aviation or non-commercial flying is far more risky than commercial aviation. If you're flying commercial, it's much safer than if you're flying with uh, lower hours with less experienced pilots. So if you're more confused than when we started, that's okay because this is a very complex topic with a multitude of different variables at play here. Anything from the experience of the pilot to what the mission entails, whether it's flight training or EMS, or just chartering from one airport to another. Every single mission has a different risk profile. Add into the fact that there's different rates of accidents for different kinds of helicopters, and you can see this is just a mind-boggling topic. An interesting fact, though, from the NTSB is that 80% of accidents can be traced back to pilot error. That means that 80% of accidents could potentially have been avoided. It really stresses the importance of pre-flight planning, weather briefings, always taking all the precautions you can, doing safety courses like I'm doing here. Everything the pilot can do to prevent an accident is of the utmost importance. Another quote from Kurt Robinson is, when I look at accidents, it almost never is about skill. It's almost always about judgment. You have to know your limitations. You have to have the ability to say no. That only drives the point home that judgment is so important when it comes to flying. So coming full circle again, is flying helicopters dangerous? The answer is yes. And so are many other things in life, including driving a car, driving a motorcycle. But can you compare all those things? Not really. Everything is a risk-benefit ratio. Does the benefit outweigh the risk? And I apply this to everything in my life, including the surgeries I do on patients. So do the benefits of flying a helicopter, the enjoyment I get, being able to go places that I otherwise would not have, does that outweigh the risks? For me, that's a resounding yes. I'll leave you guys with one more Kurt Robinson quote that really resonated with me today. When you're flying, all your problems are on the ground and all you care about is what's in the air. And that, my friends, is the reason that I fly. So I hope that answered a few of your questions. I've got a couple days left in the course. I'm gonna do a couple flights while I'm here, so we'll take you along with that. I'm also gonna go flying with my Uncle Bob. He's got a fixed wing license. He doesn't really like helicopters. I think he called them hecklecopters last time I talked to him. Hopefully we can win him over to the rotorooing dark side. We're here with Uncle Bob. You may remember him from, well, such shout outs as the last episode, but yes. I don't think you've ever made an appearance on our YouTube channel, have no, you? No, I have Okay. This is the first time. I can't even remember the last time I saw you. It was maybe when you flew your plane across the entire continent of North America and went from California all the way to Newfoundland, which was quite yeah. a journey. like a dangerous piece of equipment <laughs> and all those things flailing around <laughs> Uncle Bob are we having problems yes we are we can't get to the airplane we're yep. locked out Let's see if there's some derelict working on an airplane over there no drone zone no drones I'd like to hang out, but I have to get home and put this away. I'll see you tomorrow, though, for the tour. Too bad we can't film on the tour. They have like a strict no photo oh, policy. I know. That's okay. You're gonna come for my uh, my flight, right? At five o'clock, though. You said. Oh yeah. Is that too late for you? Kinda. Yeah. Well, we'll I see. I think I think he's just too afraid. I am. <laughs> no, I'm not afraid. You're afraid. You're afraid of the what did you call it? The hecklecopter. The hecklopter. Hecklopter. Yeah. Get it right. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks for the lift. That was fun. Now you've had flows. Uncle Bob dropped me off. We flew over to Chino Airport from Torrance and had lunch at uh, Flows, which apparently is, as he said, legendary. We're gonna have video documentation that made it to Flows. Yes. Yeah. Legendary Flows. If we can find it. Where's Flows? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Are y'all open? Okay. 
So what do you think of Flows? Flows is getting high class now. I had my flight today with the Robinson Safety Course, and uh, the last time I flew was at Tor over Niagara Falls. Before that, it's been six months since I've flown last. Whew, a little bit rusty today. Uncle Bob's gonna come back and do a tour of the factory, which in case you guys didn't know, you can actually tour the factory for free. After that, I got my second flight. So if he's still around, he's gonna ride in the back. I think he's scared. He's terrified of helicopters. If he doesn't show up, that's probably why. If you guys have any questions about flying helicopters, ask in the comment box below. But until then, we'll check back in later. So we weren't allowed to film the tour. It was a great tour, though. It was. Fantastic tour. It was really tour. neat. It really very, interesting. Very, very interesting. And uh, as I said before, most of the parts they make here. Yeah. Very, very little of it is subcontracted out. I'd recommend if anybody's in Torrance, California, come by for the free tour. We get to film in this nice showroom area where they've got all these new aircraft waiting to be uh, test flown for their nice maiden voyages. Rolls Royce engine here. Yeah, the Rolls Royce. 300 horsepower. Beautiful thing. There ends our tour. Great time. So, so thanks for tuning in to uh, episode one of Hanging with Uncle Bob. <laughs> so we're done with the tour. Uncle Bob has flown back to his home airport, and I'm just waiting for my afternoon flight. But in the meantime, I found these crazy warbirds. Check this out. Notice all the gauges are the same as on the R44. All the old steam gauges. Oh my god. Claustrophobic. <laughs> okay, that was a cool experience, albeit a little bit claustrophobic. I'm gonna go uh, check in with my flight instructor now. I'm gonna go up for a flight and probably practice a bunch of auto rotations. So let's go. Okay, finished the flight. It was awesome. We did a ton of auto rotations. Uh, what an auto rotation is, is that actually it's an emergency procedure that we can use to land the helicopter if we have an engine failure. So a lot of people think that if your engine quits in a helicopter, you're dead. That's not the case. You can actually glide in a helicopter. When the engine's working, it's spinning the rotor and the air is being forced from above the rotor blades, through the rotor disc, and down. But what's happening in an auto rotation is the airflow reverses and the air is now rushing up from underneath and it's spinning the rotor by itself, sort of like when you're blowing a pinwheel. So you can actually maintain rotor RPM just by the act of falling through the air and you establish this glide. Side note, if you let your rotor RPM decay and get too low, you could stall your blades and you will then plummet to your death. Rotor RPM management is paramount when you're doing auto rotations. Like that's the thing that's saving your butt. Once you establish your auto rotative glide, you just ride it right to the ground, pull back a bit at the end in what's called a flare to get rid of your forward airspeed, level out, pull some collective at the bottom to cushion your landing on, and you just ride it right to the ground and land safely. Uh, hopefully with no damage to yourself or the helicopter. So that's what we practiced today. We did a bunch of different variations on those. We did some steep bank turns in them. And you wanna land in a spot that's really close to you and you don't wanna glide right past it, you can do some big steep S turns to get you on the ground without as much forward traveling. That's pretty much it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. Reunited and it feels so good. Hi. There you are. Nice to see ya. Hi, wife. dog. Hi. <laughs>